Hey, well, hello, everybody. It's about 7.45 on a Wednesday night. That is Terminal 21, the El Gaucho Argentinian Steakhouse. And right there is the Asok BTS station. This is Soy 19, Sukhavit Soy 19. And I am heading to Charlie Brown's Mexican. A lot of people might remember when it was over on Soy 11. I'm not sure how long ago that was, but at least at least six or seven years ago and that's the last time I ate there so let's go find it it's kind of up on a little side soy but really close to Terminal 21 and the Westin Hotel on one side Terminal 21 on the other head up soy 19 and I'm going by memory it's the first or second left and yeah I was correct the first left you'll see this small boutique hotel the key and we'll just make this quick left The ambassador, smart and fashion, Taylor's right across the street. But you can't really miss it. So make the first left. And Charlie Brown's is just down on the left. And there it is, Charlie Brown's Mexicana. There's some outdoor tables, but I'm heading to uh, enjoy a little air conditioning. I just walked about two miles. I'm wearing jeans. And as expected, a nice... Uh, Nice crowd of expats in. Here's a big large table. I did ask if she had carne asada on the menu and she said no. They have a steak fajitas. So I might give that a try. She said the carne asada is uh, on special every now and then. And that salsa is pretty tasty. Got some nice chips and salsa. I just ordered the beef fajitas. It's not too bad, 480 baht. Uh, chicken is 450. Big, huge, large burritos are 385. Chicken or beef burrito, chipotle chicken. And I'm just freezing the menu here. Chimichangas, 395 chicken, 405 beef. So yeah, looks pretty good. So we'll, uh, we'll give Charlie Brown's a, a try. I, I would have been in here sooner, it's just, I'm always somewhere else when I think about it, but I'm here tonight. All right, I have to say that's a really good salsa. I make my own salsa over here. Um, oftentimes, the only thing you can find is like Doritos salsa in a jar, and it's still 8 or $9. So tomatoes, uh, onion, peppers, all that is cheap. I can make a big, huge uh, thing of salsa for next to nothing. But that salsa is about as good as I make, and it's about as good as anything I'll have in uh, Old Town in San Diego. Good stuff. And I'm not drinking yet. I'm going to meet some friends later, but I see some pretty legit-looking margaritas around the room. And let's see, an original lime is 210 or you can get a pitcher of margaritas for 1080 baht. Strawberries, 220 Although Corona is going to come at a premium, 210 baht a bottle or 120 for, what is that? Heineken Beer, Lao, Tiger, Singa, Samig Lights. And if you feel like tequila, I don't have my glasses on. What do we have here? Jose Cuervo, Blanco, 130, all the way down to Don Julio, uh, 370. And they do have Patron, 440. And what is that one? Closia Azul? I don't know if I've heard of that. 1300 That's probably why I haven't heard of it. Or you can buy tequila by the bottle, but it's Jose Cuervo. 2400 baht. Oh, and they also have uh, tortilla soup on the menu. That used to be one of the only things I cooked, unless I was barbecuing. Tortilla soup down at Puerto Nuevo. Down, I don't know what that is, 60 miles down the Baja Coast from San Diego. You go to uh, get your lobster, and tortilla soup was also always part of the opener. Delicious. I copied the recipe and used to make that at home. So she just brought over my fixings, and again, I apologize, some kind of crazy lighting. And they appear to be homemade tortillas in uh, one of these cool little warmers that I'm used to seeing at uh, my Mexican grandma's house. So that's, that's cool, little little touch of home. And there you go, beef fajitas on the sizzling uh, skillet. Looking pretty good. Probably more than I need to eat, but 
that's okay once in a while. There's actually quite a bit of meat on there when you uh, just go get about that size of steak. It's generally four, five, six hundred bots, even at the grocery store. So I'm not com- maybe a little less, but I'm not complaining at all for four eighty for these fajitas and all the fixings. Well, a really nice restaurant. I just talked to Primo. I'm not sure if he's the owner chef. I think he's the chef. But that was a delicious meal. No complaints at all. I'll definitely be back. And that's Primo there. He's, uh, I think he told me he's from Guadalajara. I know he's, I know he's Mexican. I don't remember exactly what he said. But he's cooking up some good food over here. So 550 baht for my fajitas, chips and salsa, and I just had a Sprite. I'm going to start drinking here in a little bit. So delicious meal for less than, what is that, 16 bucks, something like that. I, I will definitely be back. Charlie Brown's near Soy 21, off of Soy, Sukhumet Soy 19. Check it out. Primo did tell me he makes his own corn tortillas uh, for the chips. I had to ask because they were delicious. So maybe order up a big basket of chips and a bowl of salsa. Because unlike in the United States where it's just free-flowing chips and salsa, they really can't afford to do that over here. It probably cost a bit to make up all those tortillas to just throw all that away every night. So order it up special. It's still going to cost pennies, $3, whatever. And it will be delicious. His flour tortillas were also really good. He said he did not make them homemade, but has a supplier where he gets them. I can definitely tell they were homemade like and maybe frozen and then just cooked at the last minute it was that type of feel so definitely better than many of the store bots you'd get in the united states no no complaints at all really good yeah so it's a nice little place with a full bar and trust me i have more than my fair share of uh 40 and 60 baht tri- Thai street food meals, but sometimes you just want uh, a little Western taste, and this Charlie Brown's is uh, a pretty good option. Yeah, I'm not one of these guys that tries to eat every meal, a Western meal or in a, a restaurant like Charlie Brown's, but it's okay once in a while. Do a little splurging, but I didn't really move over here to pay the exact amount or sometimes even more than a meal might cost where I'm from in the United States anyhow. And down at the end of the street, that's Soy 19 where you'll find Terminal 21. There's Charlie Brown's. And this little alley right here will be Soy 17, take you right to Sukhumvit. And there's also right here, this is the back door. I don't know if you can see this in the dark to the Four Points Sheraton on Soy 15. If you happen to be Staying at that hotel, you can just run out this uh, this back door with your guest card, and you'll be right here at the restaurant. And right when I sat down, they gave me the complimentary uh, chips and salsa. Again, it's a smaller size. You, you can't compare things in Bangkok to, in my case, California. In, in California, we just eat so much. It's not unusual to walk into the restaurant and knock out three big things of chips and salsa before our meals arrive. That's not really how people eat over here. It's probably not a good way to eat even even in the United States, but we do it. So over here, if you want a, a ton of salsa and chips, you're just going to have to order the bigger size. But they do give uh, one complimentary as you come in. And I asked Primo, uh, you know, how he made that salsa. And he says with a lot of uh, imported ingredients, imported jalapenos and all, I'm sure they're in a can, but still, it came out delicious and he said that stuff is not cheap so he can't you know do like in california putting big huge containers of uh homemade corn tortilla chips and big bowls of imported jalapeno sauce on the table when half the time it's just going to go in the garbage so they have to do it that way you order it up and two three bucks you'll get a nice size order and right here is the corner of soy 17 close to the Terminal 21, but you'll find the Robinson Shopping Center with a 24-hour McDonald's. I'm going to stick my head in there. It's about time for a couple more solid black t-shirts. Kind of the uh, expat uniform over here. So let's stick my head in here and see if we can find them. The thing with Terminal 21, in, in my case anyhow, 
I guess there's an H&M and a Gap or something. I don't really shop at either, either of those places. But it's more just a bunch of little specialty stores. This Robinson's a little bit more just like a department store. And seen, things always seem to be on sale. And there it is right there, the expat uniform. I'm making fun of it as I'm uh, looking to get my black t-shirts. And black's the way to go. <laughs> you go through so much deodorant and uh, sweating over here. Good luck wearing light colored t-shirts. You'll blow them out, at least in my case, pretty fast. So plenty of name brands in here. And like I said, I don't know if a lot of these things are last year's models, but if you're looking for a pair of Hush Puppy shoes, what is this, 20% off of one pair or 30% off of two pair, you won't find those deals in uh, in too many places around town. It's still gonna still gonna come at a cost. What are these hush puppies? Three thousand something bought. So they're still gonna they're still gonna cost a little bit of money. I have my glasses on there. What does that say? Good selection of luggage up here. A lot of it says fifty percent off. All kinds of cookware. You can find a lot of these things in Lotus and Big C, but. If you're into your cooking and looking for a little bit higher end product, this T-Fall, you'll see it around, but different uh, fancy cookware. It's only gonna be found at Paragon and places like that for top dollar. I'm assuming a lot of this T-Fall is uh, at a more affordable rate here in the Robinson and yet still pretty good stuff. All kinds of uh, mixers and blenders. Yeah, come check it out. I'm not pushing the place. I'm just trying to trying to give you some tips, save some money on some quality gear. Now, if you're into baking, it's very rare to find an oven in most condos. But you can see for 4,000 baht, you could probably make a cake in that thing, I'd imagine. Or this one, 10,000 baht if you're taking your baking and roasting of turkeys and things like that a little more serious. I just have a toaster oven on top of my microwave, but for 3,000 baht, if I had a ton more, what do you want to call it, uh, shelf space or uh, counter space, I might go with one of these for only 3,000 baht. That's a, that's a decent size. I'll give you a comparison. Yeah, that's all I have right there is the uh, $1,200 toaster oven, but that's all I need. Maybe I should have spent a little bit extra to get something a, a little more powerful, but toaster oven... Heats up my little sandwiches every now and then. I didn't buy it here. I bought a Samsung at uh, Lotus. Little vacuum. Um, about the same price. No, I, actually, I think I got it for 1600 baht. So they're not super powerful. This is an Electrolux, but they come with a handle. Mostly, I just bought it. I have two kind of fuzzy rugs. I don't know what they are. 4x10s or 6x10s, something like that. And they're, uh, they kind of shed. So I just really bought that little vacuum just to hit those two rugs and it's worked out fine and i wandered up here to linens i'm always on the lookout for on sale flat sheets they're really hard to come by i've said it in other videos she has a couple of flat sheets over here but it's uh 65 dollars for one king size flat sheet and yeah i don't need it that bad <laughs> maybe it's a little ghetto but i use a sheet as my my blanket just Sometimes the air conditioner is on for three hours during the middle of the night, and I'm under that little sheet, and it works out just fine, yet I'm using a fitted sheet. Well, these are 70% off. I'm using a fitted sheet as my blanket. I've kind of got used to it. It's no big deal, but a flat sheet would probably be cooler. <laughs> now, I have a comforter on the bed and, and pillows and pillowcases, of course, but I just, I just lay on top of that comforter. I mean, I, I don't chill my place down like an ice box and then get under the covers i keep it at a pretty moderate temperature and half the time this time of year i don't even have the air conditioning on and i just have the windows open i'm up on the uh whatever i'm on 26th floor so i get a nice nice breeze through my little corner unit windows so the sheet's all i need and every time i mention i sleep with the windows open i get one or two comments on um aren't mosquitoes a problem and they're not a problem for me i've mosquitoes or flies i maybe maybe i've had one fly buzzing around in my unit and uh i've been there over six months but it's just not an issue mosquitoes are 
zero issue. Now I am up on a higher floor and I'm not next to a drainage channel or anything like that. Maybe it'd be more a problem if you were on the second floor and 10 feet away from a big pool of, of standing rainwater, but that's not the case for me. I did get my toothbrush here. I just kind of, kind of went for one of the middle ones, the 745. I mean, you can go as as crazy as a 5,000 baht. Well, I guess that's not crazy, taking care of your teeth. And maybe I'll upgrade at some point to the uh, whatever that is, Sonicare, such and such, compared to just the, uh, the cheaper one that I got. But don't bring or don't buy um, a toothbrush. Again, I'm, I'm a United States guy, so I apologize. I know not everybody watching this is working on 110 power in the United States. But if you are in the United States, be careful on the different things you plan on bringing over here because everything's going to run on 220. And you'll probably just, uh, even with an adapter, plug something like that in and next thing you know, you smell something burning. So just buy a lot of those things over here. And if you're from Europe or Australia, I guess is on 220. I apologize. I just don't know. I've been to all those places. I just don't know how things work as far as appliances and all. Just all I can do is give advice on uh, guys from the United States like me. I can only talk about what I know. And uh, yeah, a lot of those things are not going to work so well. Uh, laptops and all, not a problem. They have a little mode in them to switch over, work on 110, 220. And I have two laptops I brought from the United States that are working perfectly over here. You have a really high-end electric razor and by that, I don't know, 150 bucks or whatever. Yeah, maybe that'll work on dual volt voltage. But a lot of cheaper things, I wouldn't waste your time. You're going to bring them over here, and even with a, an adapter, they might blow up. See, for example, this is a hair dryer. And that's what you're working with here in Thailand. Again, maybe that's the same as a lot of places in Europe, but it's certainly not the same as uh, U.S. appliances. Hey, so thanks for checking out this little peek at Charlie Brown's and uh, wandering over here to Robinson, checking out some of the uh, Christmas decorations around town. Have a great evening. Consider following along on the channel. I'd appreciate that. Take it easy. See you later.